What's up, it's B the Installer. I'm here to hide these ugly TV wires. So I'm gonna actually do it with this dual high voltage, low voltage play, tie it into the electrical below, show you how to do all of that and make it look nice and clean. Now before I've made videos on how to put a power bridge in, which doesn't actually attach to the electrical. It's a little bit unprofessional for like a full installation. Another option if you either have concrete walls or you're renting is just to put one of those cable mate cord covers in a small area where, you know, really is it worth the time and effort of running all the wires. But we plan to be here for a while and these cords are driving me nuts. So I'm gonna show you how to wire this completely in wall and then finally just have a nice clean TV, entertainment center, no wires. Now that we have the TV out of the way, this is the bottom of the TV. It's not a like a big distance. It's just more of the fact that a lot of wires just makes for an ugly mess. And definitely make sure to check and make sure the electrical's off. You can turn it off at the circuit level or just flip the entire breaker at your house if you wanna be sure. Test it too to make sure, plug something in or get an electrical tester. Make sure the power's off, not worth getting electrocuted. So I got some weird readings here. Took the cover plate off and I, I thought there may have been a stud on this side as well because my office is on the other side of the wall with a wall here, but that's more in this range. It turns out that was just a false reading here. There is a stud on the left side. If we want to double check and make sure that there's no um, fire block, it looked like it was clear sailing going up. So we're clear to cut our hole here, cut our hole there and start wiring. So really what you could do is you could go here all the way up into this range. I think the best placement would be somewhere in this range where it's at the bottom of the mount, even with that. And we know that the stud is outside, so we have plenty of distance and the TV is way out here. So this is the box we're gonna use. Make sure that you trace the sides you know, accurately and don't trace the top and the bottom because then this box will fall in. It's meant to sit outside the drywall. So you need to mark these little holes right there and then I'll square it up and level it once I have it up here. And we can go about this far to the left, so I'm kind of just gonna go as close to the mount as I can, kind of closer to the bottom, and I'll make little marks, like I said, right there, and on the top. And then kind of scratch the outsides. And so there is our box that we need to cut out. And you know, give yourself a little room, because if it's real tight, and when you put the cover plate on, it'll hit the mount. And then we'll kind of level it up, like I said. So now we're gonna cut this out. I do have the dust pan to catch the dust, but we did put the blanket down as well. Just make sure you don't make a, a huge mess. Okay, so initially I had planned on going further to the right, but behind here is like a, a one by six or a half by six uh, plank. I could have kept going where we wanted to, and then I would have had to have taken my sawzaw and cut that out, or I just moved to the left. So we, we have plenty of room on the left side. Had another, I can see that that far, so about three in, two, two, three inches there where we could have gone to the left more. So we know that we're in a good spot. We can just push those electrical to the side and put our box in here, no problem. So now let's uh, go ahead and cut the bottom box. So again, I mark the little holes inside the uh, low voltage box. Uh, and then I go, normally I go to the outside of one and the inside of the other to make it the same width of that box. And then a good uh, habit is to level it out so that your, your box is relatively similar or close. You wanna have it the same height as your power outlet so it doesn't look goofy on the wall. So we'll go ahead and uh, catch the dust for this one to make this hole. Broke it off. So we got the holes made. That one's a little bit small. Gotta make sure they fit. 
Better to be smaller than bigger, as I said, and then you can always fit. So that fits in there, it's good. That's a little tight as well. There we go, so both boxes fit now. So now we'll pull this power outlet off. We already killed the electrical to this outlet. It's a 15 amp as well, which is good because this power outlet that came with this is a 15 amp power outlet and we can use the 14.2 Romex that comes with it too. So a little easier Romex to work with. It's not quite as hard, but again, check with your building code. Also make sure you turn the power off so that you don't get electrocuted. So I'll pull this out and we'll get working. So we're gonna wire this up. They have this wired where all the lines go in and out of the same outlet. I know some electricians will say like, you know, make wire nuts and then have one line pigtail into this outlet, but they've already done it three times and there's a fourth available. So we'll just tie in to the electrical in that manner. And again, I have this 14.2, so we'll run this down the wall along with the HDMIs. Uh, it could go to the left here. We're gonna have the HDMIs coming down to the right. I'm gonna put three of these HDMI cords in the wall. Uh, you could put an extra one in, but I really don't think I'll need more than three. And then I'll put the electrical line down. So let's go ahead and put all those wires in the wall. So these are 15 foot wires. We don't need 15 foot HDMI cores, but you know, it's better longer than shorter. And I have two that I can use as like components. And then I can use like this one as my eARC one for the soundbar. That way I'll always know which HDMI is which. And again, just because it's easy for me here, I'm just gonna just dump them down the wall and catch them at the bottom. And I don't know how much exactly we need at the top. I'm gonna need enough to go along the arm and then go back out to the side of the TV. So something like that is useful. And to be honest, it's only got about three or four extra feet at the bottom, which it's gonna go back inside that cabinet. I'm gonna cut a hole and put it in the cabinet. And then we have the electrical on the other side. Again, it's coming into the same hole for now. And I could have just run them all together, but I wanna keep them separated. If I bring all of them down together, then it's like they'll get all twisted up. Uh, if you need a little bit of a space, like I said, for my hand, I could have done the electrical first. So maybe I can get these HDMIs out of the way so that I can get my hand in here. So I'm going to try to bring it through this little hole in the bottom um, because there's a lot going through the top holes already. So that hole helps to get my hand in here a little better and then I can feed it up into the box. And if you need to, if it's kind of Hard to reach, you can always grab it with the pliers, pull it through. Now these HDMI cords that I moved out of my way, we can pull back through. I'll grab the box and now we're going to pull the electrical through. We could cut off the excess. Um, we're not gonna need it. Like leave about 12 inches, you know, nine to 12 inches extra outside. Uh, and then I'm gonna feed that electrical through this box, actually the bottom. Grab it and kind of pull it into the box. And then we have the pass-through box for these HDMIs. Pull the excess through. We have it all situated. You know, fold those clips down because these clips catch the drywall, so we gotta fold them in. Push this all the way in and then we're gonna tighten those up. Be careful when you tighten those clips because if you over tighten them, they'll snap and we only have you know one at the top and bottom. The clip is gonna clip, flip up this way in behind the drywall. You need to make sure that it's deep enough and that if you have double drywall or plywood or anything that it's deep enough for your wall. But I'm gonna put my finger up there so it can't go past vertical when I screw this in and it'll cinch tight to the drywall. So I felt it hit my hand, which is good. And now it's going tight, tight to the drywall and there you go. So now it's grabbing a hold of the back of the drywall. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I, I can't get my finger down there, so we're gonna have to just judge and see how we feel uh, from the tension. Yeah, and so it, it got tight real quick, which means it might have not been in the right spot here. Okay. So we have the box in there, electrical on the left, HDMI's on the right, looks good. Now we're gonna tie this into the new electrical box. Let's go ahead and do that. Just go down the middle. Get my negative, positive, get the ground all separated. All right. So we can either wrap them around the posts or we can just push them into these spots there. Some people have a preference of wrapping them around the post. I do too, so I'll just go ahead and hook them around and then we'll have a good strong connection and then we'll just run our HDMI through this hole and then we'll put it on. So when we're gonna wrap these around, we're gonna use you know, about an inch, cut off about an inch of the uh, coating there. And it's just easier to kind of bend them now. That's what these good Klein tools are good for here. 
wrapping these around. And the same with the ground. And then, you know, you just need a good screwdriver and you can start putting them on. So you wanna wrap the tail so that the tail goes into your clockwise motion. If you don't, then it'll come off as you're tightening it. So got that clockwise, there we go. It's on there, very strong. Same thing with the uh, neutral here. Just do the same thing on the other side. And again, the white goes on the same side as the ground. And so we'll also get the ground on there. Nice and tight. You can screw the other ones in if you want, not a huge deal. So now that we have those in there, while this box is out, we also can shove the HDMI cords through there. Just straighten these wires out. The HDMI cords can get really coiled up because of how they're packaged. For me, I forgot that I needed to add this cord for the HDA9 for uh, the center channel use on this big A90J. We'll just put it in like this. And then what you can do again, is I can pull up some of the HDMI length and I can tape it to it and then pull the HDMI cord back down, which will then suck that wire in the wall. And that's how you can do this if you need to add cords later. Just duct tape it. And then I'll pull that HDMI cord on the wall. And there you go, you come out the bottom, pretty easy. All right, so now we have to kind of push this back in the wall, make sure our electrical goes in there nice and neat, that the ground isn't gonna come back and make contact with one of the, the power ones here. So go ahead and situate that. It would be a good time to fix this drywall here. I'm gonna have to come back and do it later, but we'll put this in and I'm gonna screw each one of these in now. There we go, all good. Wires are in the wall and it's nice and tight. So I'll strip these wires off again, get it back into the box and cut off the sheathing. And we have a little excess wire, so I'll cut that off as well. Now there are a couple options, as I said. We could wrap these around the posts. We could pull all these wires out, put them in a wire nut, and then stick one back in, pigtailing it. But these power outlets are rated the same as the wire nut. It's not wrong to have these wires in here. That's why they have the wires in there. I mean, it may be your opinion that it's better to either put them around the posts or wire nut them, but this is perfectly fine. And since they're like this, I'm just gonna continue because on every job and on every power outlet, you can't go back and undo electrician's work just to make it quick. So we'll just go ahead and cinch these in. Neutral in there. Okay, it's in tight. And then we have, got the juice right there. Pop that in and there we go. They're both in there solidly. And since this ground goes out of the box here, I'm just going to make an, I'm gonna pigtail this ground wire and add a new piece in here. So go ahead and cut these to the same length. And then uh, we can clip those ends off and then put our wire nut on. Okay, and then now we have a, a new pigtail for our ground wire, which we can put on and uh, tighten up. There we go. I do recommend you making sure the power works and all that, but I'm gonna push it in. No sense in turning the power back on and then stuffing it all in there and having something short. So I'd like to kind of get it all situated first. Make sure we feel safe that the wires aren't going to be touching. Uh, that looked nice. And then go ahead and get it all back together and then we'll turn the power on. And then we can put this cover plate on. Now our cover plates aren't gonna match. Unfortunately, it's just gonna be a white cover plate. And while we're here, let's go ahead and put our low voltage box in there. So we'll take all of our wires that we have, including this super long 3.5, put them in this box going from the back forward, run it all the way onto the cords. And then we'll put this box back in again. I kind of use my fingers to make sure that those uh, little clips don't overextend because once they snap off or bend, they're harder to use. And make sure that you don't uh, accidentally get your HDMI cords up behind that either, because that can break your cord. So that just spun around in a circle, so that is exactly not how I wanted to do that. So here, I'll grab it with my finger. Tighten it up, and there we go. So now that box is in there nice and tight. And all we have left to do is put this cover plate on. We have this uh, plate that we're gonna put on the bottom. I'm going to take it apart comes in two pieces. This is the piece we have to put over first. The things we do to make it look nice. Put this one in here. You can get all this stuff on Amazon, so I'll try to link everything in the description. And 
and then we put the final cover plate over that. There we go. So now we have a nice clean cover plate. Obviously, again, they don't match because I need to change this out, but I'm not going to buy a bunch of ivory plates in order to match these ugly old plates that I need to replace anyway. So I think it looks nice there. And then, you know, we can raise or lower those cords as needed. There you go. All right. Put the safety screw back in. Okay. So we got the TV back up and all the wires connected and I'm gonna show you them real quick. We have all the wires connected, uh, going along the arm, you know, the HDMI's in here uh, and that audio cord, it does work. Uh, I did have to extend it so there's a little extra cord everywhere. I went from a four foot cord to like a 30 foot cord. So uh, make sure you have, you know, proper HDMI's that work. These are a little stiff. When you run your HDMI cords, make sure that you give it a little slack. These are left loose intentionally because when you fold a mount up, you know, sometimes it'll yank cords out or you can break HDMI ports. So uh, try to secure it to the mount so that these don't move into the ports. And then along the arm, I give it a little bit of looseness, uh, make sure the power cord doesn't come unplugged. And then it goes all the way to the other side for the power. So up here looks pretty good. Let's look below. Down below, basically I made a hole. I just bore out like a two inch hole there have the HDMI's come through, coiled them up and zip tied them. It's not perfectly neat yet. I mean, we have the PS5, which is big, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna lay it down, put a shelf in and have this come up here or what, so I kinda just threw it in. This is not a soundbar, actually, it's just the HTA9 from Sony, which is the four speakers and subwoofer, and that connects with the 3.5 millimeter cord and the HDMI up to the TV, and then we have HDMI, I think it's two, connected to the Apple TV, and then HDMI four, which is 4K at 120, going into the PS5. So got the surge protector uh, as well in here. It's not perfect yet. I might put the shelf in here, like I said, but for now it'll do and I can just close it all up and now we don't have to worry about wires. Okay, that's it. That's how to hide your wires. I hope the video has been useful for you. Definitely comment below if there's a question you have about how I did something or if you would do something differently or if you need any of the products that I had talked about, look in the description below. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, set the notification bell to all to get the next uploads and just like that, you can be the installer.